Hello, so for today's video lesson, we are going to be looking at graphing and analyzing the data. More importantly, we're going to focus on covering just line graphs. I want to also give a little shout out to Amy Brown at Science Stuff, as many of the slides are adapted from her own material, so I appreciate it. Now with this, we want to have our purpose as we usually do with our notes. And so we have two big purposes today. Purpose number one is to be able to interpret trends on a graph. And second, be able to compare data. So we want to be able to identify different patterns, so trends that are happening, and we want to be able to compare them to other points of data to see uh, what's meaningful and what it actually, you know, they have in common, what they have different, what's happening really. So on one of your first pages within your practice book, you will find this information. Now you're responsible for filling in all of these red words as those are kind of the big pieces, the important pieces of information. The rest is that helpful information to help you complete the full idea. So please follow along as I read. Whenever data is collected, it is often presented in a meaningful way so that others can view and make sense of it. Often, the data will become presented in a data table or a graph. Data tables are a way of organizing the information. Graphs are pictorial diagrams that represent numerical data. All right, so we have data tables. They just organize our numbers, allows us to go back and access them and use them a lot easier. Frequently, we will then turn that table into a graph, which is kind of just a picture of our data. It's a more visual representation, and typically it's a lot easier to look at and understand at a glance than just a large table of numbers. And before we continue on, just a couple of other things to make sure we're aware of. As a student, it's important that you master a couple of these skills, right? So interpreting and reading graphs, that's just something that's really important. We're going to spend a lot more time on it after this. That's a great life skill to have, just knowing when you have information in front of you, what does it mean? Is it something we need to take serious? Is it something that we don't? And just kind of understanding what information is being presented to you. And then with that, with that information, knowing how to critical think and problem solve based off that information, right? Think what's a possible solution? Is there a problem? How can we fix it based off the data that's being presented? All right, so our first question that we're going to have, so we have to study this graph here, right? That's what our kind of our overall directions are asking us to do. And we'll have a number of questions, and our questions here are going to be written in red. So what information is being shown in this graph? So we're not going to say, you know, any conclusions, none of that. We're just simply saying, what does this graph really tell us? Typically, when we're doing this, the best places to look are going to be our different axes, okay? Our X and our Y. And so if we look at that, we see we have average plant height and we have fertilizer. So with those kind of things in mind, <clears throat> we can say that our graph shows the effect of different concentrations of fertilizer. So the concentrations we know because that's what milligrams per liter. Milligrams per liter is going to be our amount of mass per volume. If we remember, that's a unit for density. And a concentration is kind of like density. It means a very similar thing. How concentrated, in this case, is the fertilizer? How much of it do we have? On the growth of three different types of plants. So we have our different plants here, okay? And we know its heights because that's what we have over here, okay? So it's really important when you look at graphs, we look at especially our axes. And actually, in this one, we do have this piece over here we got to pay attention to because we have different lines. So if we had like a key or a legend, sometimes you'll see that kind of up over here in this area. All right, uh, we'd want to pay attention to that. So that'll help us understand what our different lines are also telling us. All right, so moving on to our second question, we're again still living in that same graph. Describe the results shown for corn plants. So now for this one, right, we're not gonna look at all of the lines. We're just looking at one line in particular. And this time we're just looking at our corn plants. Okay, and so that's gonna be the line right here all right so if we're looking at that and we need to describe those results there's a couple of things that we could think about we could think about how as we go right words across the page okay our fertilizer amount is going up as we go increasing in height or rather as we go up our y-axis our height increases and if we look along here, so if our fertilizer is at 50, we're at, you know, just below 10 centimeters. If we go up to 100, we're now at about 15, and then we get up to about 22, and then we're at about 28, and then we're at about probably 32, 33. Okay, each time, 
our height was going up. So we can have the general idea that as our fertilizer amounts increase, then our plant height is going to increase as well and pretty consistently, right? It maybe levels off a tiny bit here, but for the most part, as we add more fertilizer, our plant height increases for corn plants. And so really how we could write that is for corn plants, the higher the concentration of fertilizer, the taller the plants will grow. All right, so our plants are going to be going up again as our fertilizer goes up. Next, so our third question is describing the results shown for the oak seedlings. So now this time we are only going to be looking at the oak seedling, right? So an oak seedling would be a small oak tree, kind of like a baby oak tree. All right, and so then that's going to be this line here. So we want to be careful that we're following the right line, right? Otherwise we can get the wrong information. So now again, we want to kind of look at, okay, as our fertilizer goes up, what's happening to our average plant height? Well, it looks like, okay, we're going up, we're going up. And then we notice we really level out here, right? We're not staying in the same spot. And then now we even start to decrease. So that's interesting. So really, as we add fertilizer, we increase until a certain point. So at a certain point, it looks like fertilizer isn't being helpful anymore and maybe if it's even being harmful over here on the side right so how we can write that out uh, we can look at all right so as the concentration of fertilizer is increased uh, growth of oak seedlings is improved up to a certain point right so we can talk about how yeah fertilizer helps but once you get to high levels of it it's not helping us very much and so we want to look at that all right, so now for our next one, we need to describe the results shown for the rose bushes. So now we're going, going to do the third one, the one we haven't done yet. And so that's going to be our rose bush. And we're going to say we have this line here. And if we look at that, okay, so, well, if our fertilizer is increasing, if we look at our height here, well, we're actually decreasing, right? As we go, if we have no fertilizer, we're actually at our highest point. As we go, we keep getting just a little bit lower each time and then maybe getting slightly less impactful here at the end. But really, when we're almost all the way down to the bottom, we're almost getting no growth at the very end. Okay, so as our fertilizer is increasing, our plant height is decreasing every single time. So a possible answer would be for rose bushes, increasing the concentration of fertilizer inhibits plant growth. When I say inhibits, that means prevents or stops the plant growth. It doesn't allow it to grow as easily. So feel free, again, you don't need to write these word for word. Feel free to kind of tweak them a little bit for language that maybe suits you better. All right, and so now our next question. So now that we've interpreted each one of our lines, we got to now apply that a little bit and find out some more details that maybe could be helpful. So at what fertilizer concentration do oak seedlings stop improving? So now we want to know. So we're looking again just at our oak seedlings. And we want to know at what point does it stop helping us? So again, we're looking at this line right here. And if we're looking at that, at what point does it stop helping us? I would say that it stops hel uh, helping us right around this point, right? I mean, we clearly tell that it's not helping us there. Uh, however, uh, it's already decreased at that point. So it's also safe to say that it actually stopped us right here. It's no longer helping us after this point. Right, so somewhere between those two points, so somewhere between here and here, we started to decrease. So our answers could vary slightly, uh, but I would say really, once you get to 150, it's no longer gonna help us anymore. So a possible answer that we could have is as concentration, or at concentrations above 150 milligrams per liter, oak seedlings growth is inhibited. So it slows down. So after that's kind of that 150 is kind of our marker. Once we get past this point here, it starts to go down. So after anything above 150 would be a fertilizer concentration that does not help us. All right, so now we're looking at what was the height of the tallest plant used in this experiment? So we have our three options. We have corn plant, we have oak seedling, and we have rose bush. We want to know which one was the tallest and about what height was that? So if we're looking, uh, we have our highest point for our corn plant was right here. Our highest plant for our oak seedling was right, uh, I'm sorry, it was not right there. 
<clears throat> uh, for oak seedling was right here. And our tallest point for a rose bush was at the very beginning, right over here. So we can see, all right, so our, that means if we look kind of on the line, if we kind of draw our lines here, that's about where our oak seedling is. Uh, our uh, rose bush, you know, right, it's pretty easily right there. And then our corn plant is going to be right about here. Okay, so if we have that corn plant, definitely the highest. And we don't have all these little intervals, so it's hard to tell. I would say it's a about 32 or so, maybe 33 centimeters um, for our overall height. And so a possible answer that we could have is corn grew to an average height of around 33 centimeters. Again, it could be 32. It's somewhere around that height. Uh, and we could add that piece of when fertilizer concentrations, uh, concentration was 250 milligrams per liter. So we don't have to put that, but it adds a little extra detail. If you just want to have that first part, that's also totally fine. Question number seven. So now we're looking at our, uh, so for which uh, plant is a, this fertilizer least effective at higher concentration? So whatever fertilizer we're using, for which plant is it least effective? And so if we're looking at plant height, really what this is asking us, which one did it hurt the most? Which one did it result in the lowest amount of growth? And if we're looking at this, well, um, now, of course, you know, at low concentrations, it varies. We're looking at just high concentrations. So that means we're going to want to be looking at probably about our 200 uh, and, you know, maybe consider our, or sorry, consider 200 and 250. I'm sorry, I misspoke there. So we're kind of going to look through this window here. And if we look in that window, we can see that really our two lowest points are right here and right here. And they both belong to the exact same line, the exact same plant, and that's going to be our rose bush, right? Because our other ones, they're all much higher than uh, our rose bush. So we can then kind of come to a conclusion, well, at higher concentrations, this fertilizer, really unhelpful for our rose bush. So we can go ahead and put down an answer of rose bushes. Question number eight. So which plant shows the best growth when the fertilizer concentration is 100 grams per liter or milligrams per liter? I'm sorry. Uh, so we just got to look at one specific point here. So if we just look at our 100. Okay, so that's the only piece we need to look at. So we just need to look up this line. That's all we need to be looking at. And if we do, well, we see we have one point here. Let's draw that a little better. We have one point right here, we have one point right here, and we have one point right here. So if we're looking at that, well, uh, this line right here, if we follow that all the way down to where it belongs, so if we follow this one, our highest one, we find that it is the oak seedling. So that means at 100 milligrams per liter, our oak seedling is going to be doing better than the rest of the plants at this point. So our answer would be oak seedling. Next, we need to predict, so this is something that we won't have on our chart, okay, but it's something that we can interpret, we can predict, we can see, you know, follow a trend, how tall corn plants might be when the fertilizer concentration is 75 milligrams per liter. Okay, so if we're looking for 75 milligrams per liter, that's going to be our point between our 50 and between our 100. So that's going to be at about right here. So then we kind of can extend that line as best as we can if we're looking at that i didn't do a perfect job but you know it's pretty good right and if we're looking we want to see okay so if we go back to that question we want to predict how tall our corn plant is going to be so we don't need to worry about the other ones we're just worrying about our corn plant line and that's going to be this one right here so if we're looking at that and we have our point right here where they intersect, that's how we can predict how tall it'll be. And I'll say looking at that, it'll be about that 12 to 13 range. And that'll be in centimeters tall. So if we use that amount of fertilizer, that's about how tall our corn plants will be. So we can approximate, so we can, the plants will be approximately 12 to 13 centimeters in height. All right, and moving on to question number 10. Consider the three types of plants used in this experiment. What reasons might explain why the results turned out as they did? 
Now, there's a lot of possible answers for this. I'll provide a couple sample ones for you in a moment, but let me explain a few things that we could look at. So there's a lot of different conclusions that we could make. We could say that this fertilizer is best for corn plants and bad for rose bushes, right? We can maybe look at, oh, well, maybe uh, plants that are on a farm do better with a lot of fertilizers. Maybe those are plants that are more accustomed, they're adapted to high fertilizers because we use a lot of fertilizers on farms in agriculture. And that's the only plant that's really there. That's a possibility. Maybe if we're looking at this, we could say that plants that produce kind of a large product, some sort of fruit or a large vegetable, right? And something that we can eat, they need more fertilizer, right? And again, that corn plant needing fertilizer. Uh, whatever it is, is, something seems to indicate that corn definitely needs a lot more fertilizer. Oak seedlings definitely need kind of a medium amount, and rose bushes, they don't need a lot, at least of this type of fertilizer. So, some of those possible answers, you can feel free to write your own. That is totally fine. I just want to give you a few possible answers in case you kind of get stuck. And that's going to be plants that produce a large fruit, or in this case, corn. We actually call it a fruiting body. It's kind of a weird term because it's not actually fruit. I understand that. Um, that's actually a term we use. Um, need more fertilizer. So we talked about that. Plants that produce a large woody stem, so like oak trees, grow best with moderate concentrations of fertilizer. Some, so something about their anatomy, something about them, large amounts of fertilizer harms them, right? And that's what our, is telling us. And that's definitely a possibility. All right, and our final step, as we do with all of our notes, is we need to summarize. So we're going to look at the idea of here's our targets. So we were wanting to, here, you can't really see my indicator there, can you? Let me make it something else here quick. So we want to uh, be able to interpret trends on a graph and be able to compare data. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and on the bottom third or so you should have a little open space um, once you're done with this kind of video lesson and you're going to talk about okay how do we interpret trends on a graph and how do we compare the data right talk about those things don't just don't write these things down right think of them as kind of questions or things you should be able to do explain how you know how to do them and with that, that finishes up our video lesson on graphs, more importantly, line graphs and how we interpret those trends and compare that data. If you have questions, please absolutely let me know in class. Uh, until then, have a good day. Thanks for watching.